Testing, okay. We're ready to go. It's been a very hectic day. <laughs> uh, hello everyone. The lecture I am about to present is titled, Letting the Facts Speak for Themselves. And now that Daniela has provided you with some of the science behind the, med <laughs> behind the medicinal use uh, of cannabis extracts, and you have observed how easy it really is to produce, I am here in an effort to help the public understand the nature of the dark and sinister forces which are still trying to keep the public misinformed about their actual rights in regards to the cannabis plant's medical use. I find it very hard to comprehend why those who inhabit this planet continue to allow the policies of all these corrupted governments to overrule the natural rights of their citizens to freely grow and use the cannabis hemp plant to their best advantage. When the simple truth is, no government or anyone else ever had a legitimate right to outlaw or restrict the use of this plant in such a way. Anyone who actually takes the time to look into this subject concerning the criminal manner in which these so-called laws and acts were established and the dreadful repercussions they have caused since they took effect cannot help but come to the conclusion that outlawing and restricting the most medicinal and otherwise useful plant on earth could only be regarded as being the most terrible and destructive crime which has ever been committed against mankind. <clears throat> Thank you. This darkest chapter in man's history began in the early 1900s and was perpetrated by the rich elite who were in control of several large industries which over the last few decades have had a very devastating effect upon our environment and our overall health and well-being as well. <clears throat> These overly powerful, sick-minded individuals used their wealth and power to manipulate government officials into outlawing and restricting the cannabis hemp plant. Oh, <laughs> into outlawing and restricting the cannabis hemp plant due to the, fa due to the fact that if the free growing and use of cannabis was allowed to continue, this plant's multitude of practical uses would then have posed a danger to many large business concerns, such as the pharmaceutical industry, the production of cotton, chemical suppliers, large energy providers, which supply us with toxic fossil fuels, along with dangerous nuclear power facilities, and almost everything else, the ruling classes of that era and even to the present day, have invested their resources in. But now that we have finally learned the truth concerning the endless variety of ways in which this plant can be used to our benefit, how could anyone expect the general public to carry on supporting governments which are still clearly working against their best interests? The actions these governments have taken to protect and support the agendas of big business concerns while ignoring their responsibility to protect this planet and all the life it supports should make it clear to us all that most governments are not to be trusted. If governments which outlawed this gift from nature had truly been working in regards to what was best for their people and had actually given any real thought <clears throat> to the consequences involved in allowing the rich elite to misuse and plunder the resources of this earth in the name of greed while leaving a trail of destruction in their wake, then there is no possible way that any legitimate government which had the best interests of their people or this planet at heart would ever have allowed the free use of this plant to become illegal. This travesty of justice took place many decades ago, and since that time, it has caused the needless suffering and death of hundreds of millions, if not billions, worldwide. Yet governments of today are trying to pretend that they actually still have some right to continue controlling this plant's use. 
Although to anyone who is thinking in a rational manner, this is clearly not the case. These governments we have at the present time tend to use words like legalization and decriminalization as a smokescreen to make it sound as if their intentions towards this issue are truly honorable. But in reality, these terms they are using will come with many regulations and heavy taxation, which none of these governments actually even have the right to impose upon their citizens. For cannabis is a harmless, non-addictive plant, the effects of which have never posed a danger of any kind to those who wish to employ its use, both medically and otherwise. Therefore, what right does any government have to continue to claim that it is within their jurisdiction to prohibit the proliferation of this plant's free use any longer? <clears throat> it seems that everywhere you look at present, you will still find governments which are continuing to try to manipulate their people to suit the agendas of those who are overly wealthy and powerful. A prime example of this would be what has been taking place in a South American country called Uruguay. And once you learn the facts concerning what is behind this so-called legalization in this country, no sensible person would agree that this is a rational solution to having this plant's use made legal. The first, thing which we, the, the first thing which should concern us all is the fact that apparently George Soros was deeply involved in what took place in Uruguay. Mr. Soros and others like Bill Gates, who have destructive intentions towards the human race, appear to have invested heavily in companies like Monsanto, which have been widely reported to be currently producing genetically modified cannabis seeds. Therefore, it should come as no surprise to anyone that the companies which are supplying the government of Uruguay are actually using genetically modified cannabis seeds to fulfill this government's needs. But all this makes no sense whatsoever when you consider the fact that there is not now, nor has there ever been, any sensible reason as to why anyone should wish to tamper with this plant's genetics in such a way. We are already aware of the fact that the natural medicinal strains which are presently available contain a vast array of healing properties and other uses, which for the most part have still remained untapped due to, in, due to the interference from our governments and their masters, the rich elite, who have been controlling their actions from the shadows. Therefore, it has now become clear to many of us that what has actually been taking place in Uruguay was designed by people like Mr. Soros to enable them to bring us genetically modified cannabis which could very well pose a danger to those who employ its use. If people allow this same type of manipulation to occur in their own countries, Mr. Soros and his rich friends who wish to, do who wish to depopulate this planet could then simply sit back and reap huge returns from the money they have invested in trying to bring about our destruction. The public must come to understand the fact that if these big money interests are successful in perpetrating this deception, they will then be in control of this plant's use in all countries which have governments that are still willing to go along with their agendas. It's common knowledge about the danger that genetic modification can present, and most of us have heard about the damage caused by companies like Monsanto in their never-ending quest to control our food supply. <clears throat> but strangely, we can still often find individuals who will tend to claim that this is not so. And recently, I, I had a conversation with a man in Amsterdam who is deemed to be an expert in cannabis genetics. And he informed me that indeed Monsanto is involved in the production of cannabis seeds. But he stated that this company and others like it are not employing genetic modification in their production. I found what he was, I found what he was trying to tell me to be somewhat hard to believe, considering the fact that there is no sensible reason why companies like Monsanto 
would take an interest in cannabis seeds unless they intended to genetically modify them in much the same way they have tampered with the genetics of so many other crops. Since this is actually the business they are in, and thus far, I still have every reason to believe that this is actually what is taking place. So how could it possibly be in the public's best interest to allow large corporations with criminal intentions to have their way when we would then be giving up our own natural right to grow and use the greatest gift that nature has ever provided to ease our suffering and enrich our lives? Only a fool would consider allowing such a thing to take place, and if anyone has any doubts about what I am saying, all they have to do to find out the truth for themselves is simply to observe what is currently taking place in countries like the US, Canada, and the Netherlands, etc. In countries such as this, and in many other nations as well, Governments are planning to have big money interests control this industry. And of course, genetically modified cannabis seeds will also play a role in their agendas. <clears throat> For many decades now, corruption on the part of our governments has been helping the rich elite to maintain the old status quo, which has produced huge profits for them, but at what cost to this planet and all the life it supports? We have all been suffering and dying under this evil, greed-induced manipulation for far too long. And since it is now more than clear that cannabis can break the shackles which have kept us bound to the wants and needs of the rich elite, I believe that it should now be obvious to us all that their days of domination over us must come to an end. But why should this concern our governments and cause them to react to our needs? when very few of us have ever actually stood up to question their criminal activities in a constructive manner. Many individuals who prefer to live in ignorance or those who have hidden agendas will try to tell you that what I am saying is just a conspiracy theory. But if this were really so, then why would very respected individuals such as Dwight D. Eisenhower and John Fitzgerald Kennedy during their terms as President of the United States, openly admit that hidden powers behind the military-industrial complex do indeed comprise what can only be regarded as being a huge conspiracy. And if nothing is done to call a halt to their activities, further abuses of this nature will then cause a great deal of harm and suffering in the future. We are now living in that future these great men warned us about many decades ago. And it is more than obvious that governments since that time have done little or nothing to bring the rich elite and their destructive policies under control. Since it appears that governments are unwilling to represent us properly, it is now left to we the people to take on this task ourselves. And to do so, we must finally come to reject whatever authority corrupted governments may think they have to rule over us. It is now a proven fact that these laws and acts against the free growing and use of the cannabis hemp plant were all based in nothing more than corruption, deceptions, and lies. Therefore, I find it rather ironic that so many individuals continue to allow their governments to dictate to them that they actually still have some strange right to control this plant's use. Of course, some individuals and organizations with hidden agendas will still tend to claim that governments must be appeased by allowing them to impose regulations and heavy taxation. But to my way of thinking, and that of many others, to allow such a thing to take place would be the same as rewarding these governments for all the suffering and death their corruption has caused over the past few decades not to mention the needless untold damage they have allowed big money interests to do to our environment. If cannabis had been properly used, many lives could have been saved and a great deal of needless human suffering could have been avoided. In addition, if this plant had been put to good use to fulfill our needs in the endless variety of ways it is truly capable of, 
We could have used cannabis in a responsible manner to replace these harmful industries, which are now in the process of harming or killing most living creatures and the planet we all need to exist. It's time we all come to realize that our trusted governments, through their own corruption or ignorance, have been leading mankind down the path to destruction, which the rich elite have provided. Therefore, I find it impossible to believe that any rational person would wish to see this type of insanity continue, when cannabis can offer us a sensible solution to most of the problems we currently face, and this plant's free medicinal use will then be able to relieve the suffering and pain of countless individuals everywhere. Governments must quickly come to recognize the fact that every day more and more people are becoming aware of the horrible crimes they have committed against us. To somewhat redeem themselves in the eyes of the public, governments have, have no choice other than to repeal these absurd laws and acts which they had put in place to prohibit the use of, the, of cannabis. And they must also call a halt to interfering with our natural God-given right to heal ourselves in whatever way we choose. Thank you. We have all witnessed the untimely deaths of individuals who were close to us after they had undergone the dangerous, ineffective treatments which our current medical systems tend to employ. But we console ourselves by allowing others in white coats to tell us that nothing more could have been done to save them. And those who turn to religion are informed that it was God's will that these sick and helpless individuals should not survive. I really have no idea why people accept this type of rhetoric when in reality, most of these patients passed away simply because they were restricted from using an illegally outlawed natural medication which could have treated them in an effective manner. So tell me, was it truly God's will that these people should die? Or could their deaths have more to do with the fact that all they were ever offered were harmful, destructive treatments which for the most part usually do much more harm than good? To most of us, there is no rational excuse as to why highly trained medical professionals would not have realized that treating patients with chemicals, poisons, and radiation are actually the most destructive measures that one could possibly use to treat the sick and suffering. Even those of us with no medical training at all, who are using common sense, would instantly reject such treatments because even to the medically uninformed, the danger these treatments pose is more than obvious. So why have our trusted doctors gone along with these harmful practices when anyone with any real medical knowledge should have risen up in protest against this horrible wrongdoing many decades ago? When one looks at the way our current medical systems treat patients, it could be well described as being little different than trying to fix a flat tire by punching more holes in it. But it is not just our political and medical systems which are to blame, for we should also not forget the role our legal systems have played in allowing these dreadful crimes to continue unabated. When it has always been more than clear that no one truly has the right to interfere with whatever treatment we may choose to use to heal ourselves. Therefore, it can only be said that in reality, our governments and the medical and legal systems they control have all been working together in upholding the policies of the rich elite, which are now destroying the health and well-being of so many people everywhere. But even though many of us have come to realize the harm these individuals are causing, a significant number of those among us still appear to be in a stupor regarding what must be done to put mankind back on the right path. Government officials often try to claim that agreements they have signed with organizations like the United Nations prevents them from allowing the cannabis plant to be used freely by their people. Or some will state that they are looking at, at method, 
excuse me, or some will state that they are looking at the methods other countries have employed to allow this plant's use as being an example which they too might be able to follow. They try to make it appear as if there are great difficulties involved in allowing this plant's use and that this is a very complicated matter for any government to deal with. Yet there did not seem to be too much difficulty involved when they illegally outlawed the cannabis plant, even though they had no justifiable or compelling reason to do so. The excuses these governments are trying to use are really little more than double talk since the United Nations or any other organizations of this nature have no right to exert this type of control over the population of any country. And as for following the example of other nations, why would this be deemed necessary when the use of cannabis clearly presents no danger to the public at large? Governments and the pharmaceutical companies continue to tell us that human trials must be conducted and that cannabis medications cannot be used until double-blind studies have been completed. But what they neglect to mention is the fact that human trials were conducted in England after Dr. William Brooke O'Shaughnessy returned from India in 1841. So it appears that this too is just another deception they are trying to use to prolong the agony of those who are currently suffering. Therefore, we should be demanding that all laws and acts which have prevented us from freely growing and using the cannabis hemp plant must all be repealed immediately worldwide. When this comes to pass, we will then be able, if we choose to do so, to produce our own cannabis medications very cheaply. This will not only greatly reduce our health costs, it will also spell an end to the medical thievery on the part of the pharmaceutical industry and others, which has been causing all this suffering for so many decades now. If nothing is preventing us from doing so, growing our own medicinal cannabis strains and producing these life-saving medications ourselves would come at a very low price. And this would be a great benefit to those of us who have few resources at their disposal. In addition, I feel that anyone who chooses to grow cannabis to produce medical extracts for their own use should not be subject to regulations or taxation of any kind. If governments wish to impose regulations and taxation, I feel that these policies should be directed towards companies which supply cannabis extracts on a large scale, for they are the ones who will be making all the profit. One would think that this would be more than enough to please any government which is actually working in the best interests of their people. But due to their greed and lack of concern for patients and their own need to hide the dark role they have played in the past, our current governments do not wish to see this occur and would much rather continue to do things their way. Then to further complicate matters even more, many of those who are involved in producing cannabis extracts at present actually support the continued regulation of this plant to prohibit its free use from the public, for this would enable them to enjoy much higher profits. If done on a huge scale, with no interference from our governments, and after all expenses have been paid, a large growing and production facility could easily produce high quality medicinal cannabis extracts for as little as $2 or less per gram. I understand the fact that any business must produce profits to exist. So even if this medication were to be, were to be provided by these facilities, for $10 a gram to those who are unable to produce their own, this would still allow these companies to generate huge returns. But much like the pharmaceutical industry, which tends to charge hundreds if not thousands of times more than a medication actually costs to produce, most companies that supply cannabis extracts at present seem to feel that they also have the right to do the same 
And this attitude puts cannabis medications out of the price range that the average person can afford. If we all had large amounts of money at our disposal, this greed-based way of doing business would not be causing so much damage. But the sad reality is that most of us are barely earning enough money to get by in life. So we simply do not have the resources required to feed the greed of others who are only out to rob, rob us of our hard-earned money. Therefore, should we all just remain quiet and allow these profit-motivated mo companies and psychopaths who control our governments to have their way while we all continue to suffer and die needlessly due to the fact that we cannot come up with the financial resources required to play their game? Or should we all begin to simply ignore these absurd laws? Oh. Testing, okay. <clears throat> or should we all begin to simply ignore these absurd laws which are causing so much harm and have been preventing us from healing in the most harmless and effective manner possible? I believe the answer to this question should be more than clear to most of us. And if governments still continue to refuse to perform their role properly, then no excuses should be accepted. And governments of this nature must quickly be taken out of office by any and all means necessary. Many governments have even felt free to put laws in place to prevent public officials from being prosecuted for the crimes they have committed, even when they are clearly guilty of breaking the public trust. But why should public officials be looked at any differently in the eyes of the law than we are ourselves? when often the crimes they have committed are of such a destructive nature. If we are guilty of a crime, then we are sent to jail as punishment. And the same should hold true for public officials who have abused their positions to the detriment of us all. When someone represents the citizens of any country, their actions must not be governed by greed or personal gain. And it is their responsibility to see that government policies and laws are based in reality rather than, unfound, rather than unfounded propaganda and lies. Since our governments willingly went along with big money concerns to see that the medicinal use of this plant was outlawed, I believe it can only be said that we have been allowing our governments to commit crimes which have had a very detrimental effect upon us all. What these governments did was truly a crime against humanity, and something of this nature should never be forgiven. For if we were to do so, it would only prove that we are simply weak-minded fools who actually do not even seem to know the difference between right and wrong. If we are truly concerned about the health and well-being of both ourselves and those we care about, then we must all begin to voice our disgust in a very loud manner which cannot be ignored by those who are supposed to represent us. It's time to inform people like Donald Trump, Justin Trudeau, and the leaders of all other countries as well, that we will no longer allow them to ignore our demands. When it comes to our natural rights as humans to be allowed to have free access to this plant to help deal with our medical issues. Thanks to the internet, we are now living in the information age, and since there is now so much evidence available which proves this plant's non-addictive, harmless nature and the miraculous health benefits cannabis medications can offer, governments must begin to respond to the needs of their citizens, and they are actually no longer in the position to protect the interests of the rich elite if they wish to remain in power. Any legitimate government's first responsibility must be to see that those they govern are used fairly and that their citizens are granted free access to all natural harmless medications which they may choose to use. At present, it appears that most governments tend to ignore the actual role they are supposed to be playing. So it is left to us all to remind them in a meaningful way where their loyalties must be focused. I am aware that most people who are hearing this lecture today wish to learn more about the cannabis plant's healing abilities and its many other uses as well. 
rather than listening to me speak about the state our world is really in. So I intend to use the time I have remaining today to do just that during the question period, <clears throat> which will follow this lecture. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I, felt that it, but I felt that it was of the utmost importance for the public to finally come to understand the real reason this plant's use has been prohibited. To find the solution to any problem, one must discover what caused it to come about in the first place. And in regards to cannabis, it's obvious that the reason this issue exists is simply due to public officials who had no legitimate right to prohibit the growing and free use of this plant. It's our governments themselves which have spawned the black market in regards to cannabis when they put these absurd restrictions in place. And that is why the price of cannabis is now at such high levels. Although cannabis has countless uses, it is no different than any other plant we have always grown throughout history to help us survive. And after our government stopped interfering, the cost of high quality medicinal bud material will, will be reduced dramatically. In essence, this plant belongs to us all, to use freely in whatever way we choose. And even the Christian Bible states this fact. Therefore, no government or anyone else has a legitimate right to tell us otherwise. If, if you or someone you care about requires the use of cannabis extracts to ease their suffering and in many cases save their lives, who are these misguided public officials who have the audacity to tell us that we are criminals if we refuse to abide by their absurd restrictions towards the medicinal use of this plant. When it is plain to see that most of those who utter such statements are only driven by greed or stupidity, and they have no care or concern whatsoever regarding the suffering of the human race. After the cannabis plant is sent free once more and we are all allowed to enjoy the positive effects its many uses will have upon our society, this in turn will bring the human race a much healthier and more sustainable way to exist. And I believe that the cannabis plant's free use will then allow us all to become something better than we currently are. There is no logical reason as to why we should be required to fall to our knees and beg any government's approval to heal ourselves with a harmless non-addictive plant, which unlike pharmaceuticals and alcohol, does not even impair your motor skills. When in fact for thousands of years, this plant has demonstrated its amazing healing powers in the effective treatment of countless individuals who were suffering with a vast array of different medical problems. It's our governments themselves who should be begging us to forgive them for all the needless human suffering they have caused in the past, which sprang from the irresponsible actions and policies they have used to deceive us. So let's get together and do something positive for a change, which will do the greatest good for us all. For if we do not begin to speak out on our own behalf to protect ourselves and coming generations from all the corruption which now exists, I feel that there is little hope that anyone who is currently in authority will ever feel compelled to do the same. Thank you so much for your time. My name is Rick Simpson. Now let's get on with the question and answer period. Thank you. Thank you. begin with. Thank you. Uh, my name is Juan Sanchez. Uh, uh, my question is, uh, what is the role of CBD uh, in the inhibition of uh, a clearance of other drugs? 
because so many uh, patients uh, use so concomitant drugs uh, for different illness. And uh, I read that CBD inhibits the... Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I'm having trouble understanding what you're saying. Sorry, so sorry. I'll come a little bit closer. Yes, thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, CBD oil, I read that, uh, that inhibits the cytochrome P450, that, that has to be too much with uh, adherence of other probes. And my question is, if uh, some patient use the CBD oil, could have uh, secondary effects or uh, what, what's happened with the other probes? For example, for a patient with hypertension or diabetes, uh, they take a lot of drugs and if you use some of the oil food, uh, make lar uh, large uh, the effect of the drugs. Well, first off, I never tell people to use a sativa extract for internal use. You know, I mean, you don't want a terminal cancer patient energized, and that's what these sativas cause. You want a strong indica extract and that promotes the sleep and rest that people need. And as for drug interaction, from what I've seen in Canada, these extracts, if, if they're produced properly, they basically eliminate the need for pharmaceuticals. This is what the drug industry is so afraid of, because this plant is going to put them out of business, and they know it. That's the problem. So I, I don't believe in mixing other medications from the pharmaceutical industry with cannabis in any way. Let the cannabis do the healing. Yes, yes, okay, thank you. Bravo. <laughs> yes. yes. economy rather than this fossil fuel nonsense and the cannabis can be used in so many different ways you know like you can mix it with creams or things of that nature for skin conditions uh, my best friend his wife was supposed to die six years ago she was two years in a hospital the doctor said there was a four percent chance 
for her to survive. And my friend, he said he wasn't having any of that, so he took her out of the hospital, he brought her home, and he used DMSO along with the oil. Now that woman is walking around healthy today, where the doctor said she only had a 4% chance to survive. So there's many applications like DMSO, a lot of people like to use coconut oil, uh, you know, even uh, olive oil. But I've always believed, I mean, I always produce the extracts in the strongest, most medicinal manner. You know, and if you want to mix it with something else, that's entirely up to you. But I like my medicine straight. So. Hi, dear. Hello. Uh, I, uh, we are here not so long time ago that uh, World Health Organization already made a statement that uh, they promised that they're going to make a statement about the cannabis healing uh, powers and uh, already uh, David Nutt uh, uh, gave them some information that uh, they should follow this during uh, this uh, research and uh, what do you think maybe it's already going to be like the final for, the, for all this government thing and maybe finally we will go there what we're talking about now? currently available that, you know, the governments can't ignore this any longer. I mean, there's thousands of testimonials right there on YouTube. People who were dying and suffering from many different horrible diseases. They had no hope. They used cannabis extracts and now they're healed. But governments tell you that you should ignore that. You know, we need double-blind testing and placebo studies and that's a pack of nonsense. A bunch, a bunch of pharmaceutical gibberish. We know this medicine works. It's harmless, it's non-addictive, and it's never killed anyone in human history. So why aren't we using it? End of story. governments, it's all propaganda. I mean, uh, back in the 1980s, a lady named Melanie Dreher, she did a study to find out where the healthiest babies on this planet are born. Well, guess what, folks? They're born in Jamaica to mothers who use cannabis a great deal. The healthiest babies on the planet. She did a follow-up study 20 years later, and these children are as healthy as a horse. They're not children anymore. But there is no logical reason. I mean, if, if they're smoking cannabis or using it, the, the extract does not harm the baby in the developmental stages in the womb, then how could it harm a child of any age? And when you look at what doctors give our children today, Ritalin and all this other nonsense, yeah. they don't know what effect that's going to have. And for God's sake, stay away from Bill Gates and his damn vaccinations. No more of that nonsense. I mean, there's countries they actually force people. Let's gotta come to an end. Excuse me, about the doses for children, would you say it's exactly the same? Children are basically, we're all the same. We all have the endocannabinoid system. And you might have a, a small child. The small child might have a higher tolerance than you do. But the beauty of this is, you cannot overdose and die. If you overdose, you sleep. And I used to do this all the time. I used to have a cup on the table. And I used to show patients when they come in, I would take a spoon and I used to tell them, all right, if I fill that cup full of cannabis extracts, I might sleep for two or three weeks, but when I woke up, I'd be on her, and I'd be healthier than before I, than when I took it. Now, let's take that same cup and fill it full of aspirin. Isn't aspirin a safe medication? No. No? 
Thousands of people die from aspirin every day or every year. So how many spoonfuls of aspirin could you take before you end up in a graveyard? This is the safest medicine on the planet. There is no logical reason why it is not being used. You know, when you look at the basis of medicine, which is called the Hippocratic Oath, what does it state? First, do no harm, and it also states that as a physician, I shall not administer poison. Well then, what are these doctors today doing? Doctors should be using medications like cannabis extract, and then they would be following their own Hippocratic Oath. We need real doctors. We don't need drug dealers for the pharmaceutical industry. Eric, my name is Henry. Very interesting, uh, I saw the, the last week we saw it, the sacred plant, we saw it actually. It was, uh, okay, very interesting. What I saw there was really appealing to me, it was a woman, she had a chronic lupus, you know, and she only juiced the leaves and reversed the lupus. What do you think about that? <laughs> well, I mean, lower quality extracts made from leaves and yeah. things of that nature, they all have healing qualities yeah. to some extent. But you see, I mean, most of the patients that I was dealing with, I mean, they were in very bad condition. I didn't have time to play games with low quality extracts. I mean, when, you're, when you've got somebody with terminal stage four cancer sitting in front of you, you've got to hit them with the strongest medicine possible to save their lives. And unfortunately, leaves and small buds, they just don't have the power. It's, they're wonderful for skin conditions. And in this case, it saved this woman apparently. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy to hear it, but all cannabis is about healing. Thank you, brother. Final question, because sorry to take your time. I find because I see it in uh, in practice that although they use what you say, it's fantastic, the good stuff, they're not sleeping. It's perhaps not enough, but they got anxiety, and they are afraid of using it. That's sativas. <laughs> Is it the sativas? Yeah. Like I said, they're energized, yeah. and they can cause anxiety. But when you're dealing with a strong indica extract, I mean the patients that I treated. After about 45 minutes, when they took a dose, about 45 minutes later, they get this big smile on their face, you know. <laughs> and then five minutes later, they go to sleep. You know, so there's no anxiety. And I tell people, like a lot of people are afraid of this, you know, I don't want to get high. Well, getting high never harmed anyone. There's nothing to be afraid of. And what I always told the patients, I said, look, for the first three weeks, you're probably going to sleep most of the time. You know, but take your, take your doses, and when you get that sleepy, tired feeling, don't fight it. The extract is telling you to go lay down, and sleep and rest are part of the healing process. And I also tell people in the beginning, for the first two or three weeks, while you're getting your, your dosage up and getting used to the effects of this medicine, it would probably be best if you didn't try to drive your car. But once you, know, once you become, you know, used to the effects of the medicine, you can safely drive your car because it does not impair your motor skills. So, it's an, this is going to be a new day for medicine. I mean, this is the future of medicine. These wonderful healing cannabinoids. And I, and I love the focus that, you know, people are putting on cannabis. But there's a great number of other wonderful healing plants out there. And uh, I think that, you know, this is going to bring them out of the closet too. And then we'll have medicines that will make us live a great deal longer and we'll be a whole lot healthier.
for good reason and with good results. There was, however, one thing that made me stop the use, and uh, I've seen a lot of people suffer from the same side effects. And I'm sure you know how to deal with this because you, I think, used cannabis and cannabis extracts in a cold climate. Probably in the winter as well, probably a pretty harsh winter in Canada. This is my question about, so when the weather is really cold, possibly cold and wet, it seems that taking cannabis is very difficult. You feel very cold and wake all the time and you literally suffer. At least people who come from warm climates. How do you deal with that? Well, I've had very few complaints about any bad effects. Um, sometimes cannabis can give you the shivers a little bit. Yeah, those shivers. It's, burning, it's, it's taking away the fat. That's what happened to me. When I, when I started taking these extracts, I used to weigh about 185, 190. And all of a sudden, when I started taking the extracts, I started losing weight. And I, you know, it scared me, because at that time I had no idea what these extracts could do. But when my weight came down to about 160 pounds, which is actually the right weight for my body, the, the weight loss just stopped. But it, but it is not unusual that people can't, you know, because you, you don't have that fat anymore to protect you. <laughs> so, but, it's, but you know, the trouble is today, I, I tell people, everyone, everyone in this audience, you should all go out and take a full 60 gram treatment, just as if you had terminal cancer yourself. Because we live in a poison environment. Our bodies are all full of toxins and heavy metals. And at present, you might feel you might feel well, but sooner or later, those toxins are going to catch up with you, and they're going to cause medical problems. So, what I suggest that people do, of course, grow your own, make your own medicine, <laughs> and uh, take the full 60 gram treatment. And then after you're done with the 60 grams, that puts your body back into a state of good health. You're completely detoxified. And then after that, take one to two grams a month. Just a drop at night. It's really up to the patient themselves, how much they want to use. But just a drop at night before they go to bed. And that will prevent diseases from occurring. And it protects us in so many ways. And on top of that, it's a wonderful sleeping medication. So the shivers, the shivers that could be accepted as a part of the healing and just tolerated, you just have to stay strong. It's, it's a lot to do with just detoxifying and losing the excess fat. You know, unfortunately, from the time we're children, we're taught to overeat. It's one thing I noticed about these extracts when I started uh, ingesting them. My, my appetite went way down. And it's, uh, Testing, okay. <laughs> but my appetite went way down. Oh, this is much better. I should have had this at the beginning. Uh, but, you know, I started eating only about one-third the amount that I used to eat. And my God, when I was going to the toilet, you know, because I had taken pharmaceuticals for five years, and I was almost scared to look at the toilet after I was done because fluorescent and weird colors it was all of these toxins being eliminated from my body. And, uh, I mean, if anybody is, you know, is concerned about weight loss, I'll tell you one thing. This is the greatest diet that any, it's not a diet, just take the extract. I've had many patients that lost over 100 pounds, and, and they didn't regain it. So I think that's kind of important. Well, they're telling me that this is over now, and I have a couple interviews to do, but I want to thank you folks for being here, and I know that we can change this world into a much better place than it currently is, but all we have to do is unite, and we can do this together. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.